Hi, this is John Buse from the University of North Carolina, and I've been asked by IDOC to uh, comment on a poster presentation that I made at the American Diabetes Association meeting just a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the study is called GWCO, doesn't stand for anything, it's just the letters that were assigned to it. Um, it involved uh, using exenatide in the current twice a day formulation uh, as compared to placebo in patients that were treated at baseline with glargine insulin uh, in combination with metformin and or uh, pioglitazone. Um, what we did in the study is in patients uh, who had an A1C of more than 8%, uh, they stayed on their same dose of glargine and the oral agents. If their A1C was less than 8% uh, at the uh, baseline visit, they had their dose of glargine reduced by 20%. Uh, and then they were administered exenatide 5 micrograms twice a day or placebo uh, twice a day uh, for uh, four weeks as is the usual with exenatide. And then the dose was increased of exenatide or placebo to 10 micrograms uh, twice a day. Now at that point in time, um, if the fasting glucose uh, was elevated uh, using the so-called treat-to-target algorithm, which was developed by uh, Matt Riddle, uh, glargine uh, doses were increased uh, on at least a weekly basis um, to try and get the fasting glucose down. Uh, at the end of 26 weeks, uh, what we saw was that the fasting glucose in the placebo-treated patients and the exenatide treated patients were identical, suggesting that we had titrated uh, the, um, the glargine equally effectively in both the exenatide treated patients and the, um, the placebo treated patients. Um, and uh, the dose of insulin uh, in the exenatide treated patients was, uh, was a bit lower. Uh, the hemoglobin A1C effect was extremely robust with the combination of titrated glargine to get the fasting glucose down um, and exenatide twice a day. Um, the end uh, result hemoglobin A1C on average was 6.7%. Um, there was about a 0.7% difference uh, in A1C uh, in the placebo treated patients uh, with an end uh, result of about 7.3%. Uh, um, so a statistically significant uh, greater reduction in hemoglobin A1C with a combination of exenatide and titrated glargine. But most interesting uh, was that despite the fact that the A1C was substantially lower uh, with exenatide uh, as compared to placebo, there really was no increased uh, risk of hypoglycemia. And specifically with regards to severe hypoglycemia, the only episode occurred in a patient that was treated with placebo. And also, as you might expect, there was moderate weight loss in the exenatide treated patients uh, as opposed to weight gain um, in the uh, patients treated with placebo. So we did this study for two reasons. One uh, was because um, I think it's pretty clear that long-acting insulin is the most effective fasting glucose treatment that we have and that exenatide um, is the most effective postprandial treatment that we have. So the combination really was potentially exciting uh, that we would be able to control fasting and postprandial glucose very effectively. And I think we basically demonstrated that uh, with the, you know, the very nice reduction in A1C down to 6.7%. But the other concern was safety, that by using these two powerful therapies would we run um, into all kinds of problems with, uh, with hypoglycemia. We were very relieved to see that there really was no uh, increase in hypoglycemia at all um, and uh, the additional benefit of weight loss. So we didn't do a formal comparison to the alternative in the uncontrolled patient on oral agents plus glargine, uh, which would be the addition of rapid-acting insulin but we do know in general that adding rapid-acting insulin to glargine, if anything, would, uh, would increase uh, weight gain, uh, certainly wouldn't reduce weight gain, and has been well demonstrated to increase hypoglycemia. Um, so we hope in the future to do that kind of head-to-head -head study of multiple daily injections of insulin versus exenatide uh, plus glargine 
but for now we know that uh, that, that combination uh, looks to be very effective in A1C lowering without any um, new or uh, emerging uh, issues with regards to safety. So for IDOC, this is John Buse. Thank you very much for listening.